What is going on guys? Boy and Bootsy Blending. Um, I'm gonna give you some time to get some paper, pen. If you're new school, get your iPhone, your iPad, your Samson, because we're gonna talk about a really good one. You know what I mean, business? Because I got a, a, a collared shirt. I don't have a hoodie on today, because I mean business. What if I told you guys that you can have an entity that won't pay have to pay any taxes could get you endless real estate endless grants federal and state can never be taken away from you so you, it'll it'll be almost like a holding company and believe it or not it's a non-profit organization uh, yes, I actually came across a new connection that for about nine to ten thousand dollars one time you can set up a nonprofit and what you're gonna use the nonprofit for is affordable housing. You'll get the right exemption, which is a 501c3, which is basically the one that churches uses. You won't pay any tax. You will actually get local level, local government or local state will actually give you grants if you buy in these properties in low income areas which I would do I'm in Connecticut so I would go to like Hartford I would go to like New Haven I would go to Bridgeport buy commercial properties areas convert it over to apartments you get the affordable housing people are in the impression that nonprofits don't make money do you know if you have your nonprofit set up properly and you're doing real estate, you can actually take in more money than a for-profit business does and pay yourself as a member. But the difference is you will not be an owner, but you will be a controlling member of this nonprofit. I'm trying to get my daughter to come in and be honest with me because you've got to have members. You don't want to just be the only member. It's not like a corporation. You want to be in compliance. So for a fee, you can actually have the law firm have somebody be on your board as one of the members for no ongoing salary for a, probably a small yearly price. And I can also be on your board. Like if you wanted to do this nonprofit and just have me on your board for a small yearly fee or a small monthly fee, you know, this might be something for you. Now, this is going to be money you just basically got to forget about because this is going to take, especially with COVID, almost a year to form. So nine to ten grand is going to take you six months to a year to form. But once you get that exemption, guys, you can go back and get it. They'll, they'll backdate it. So from the time they apply, they'll backdate it back then. You will be tax free once you get that exemption. You can go in and buy all the commercial properties and commercial buildings, multifamilies, duplexes you want. In a lot of these cases, even after COVID, the government's gonna give you grants, loans, they'll help you get into the property. You can streamline this by having a property management come in, vet your people, put them in there. You can have a nonprofit building for say, um, single moms with kids. You can have say another one for veterans. You know, you might be a former inmate and want to have one for, you know, single guys that were inmates. You never know because some guys, some guys just come out of jail and they have trouble getting housing. You know, you got a whole separate building, obviously away from the women, the single women and in another town even. You know, veterans is big. Um, disabled people. You can have affordable housing set up and actually make a profit, pay yourself. Even though it's a nonprofit, you can actually pay yourself legally to control this entity and you can have several members. And not only that, you can have a controlling member, somebody in your family being a controlling member forever, like a dynasty. In a lot of ways, this is like a holding company because it can own consignment shops. You can actually set up a church. This is something that can really fund your lifestyle for the rest of your life. And you know, if I have a collar shirt, I'm in business. So take notes. Um, again, I have a connection. It's a real law firm. 
100% legit. It will set this up for you. It's going to take nine. To, it's going to take nine to ten grand. It's going to take six to twelve months. I believe they can appoint you somebody to keep you in compliance. They do all the paperwork. They go after the exemption. You don't have to do anything. Once you cut them a check, you don't do anything. Sounds like a lot of money, but some of you guys in Zetegrity are getting some of this big money or big lines of credit. It might be a good idea to set aside 10 grand of that money and set this nonprofit up on the side while you're doing your other stuff. Diversify. You know, if all else goes wrong, you still got your nonprofit that's getting affordable housing. And just take a small paycheck, guys. I don't care if the if that was making you, if it was actually bringing in half a million a year, keep it small. Keep your salary small. Keep in compliance. You know, work with this law firm. They'll tell you what kind of salary you should take. But keep it small. If it's bringing a half a million a year, take only 50000 a year. Especially if you're somebody like me. You got your C-Corp with Zetegrity. I got my holding company. I don't need to take crazy amounts out of the nonprofit and there's legal ways you can have this nonprofit pay for where you actually live that's in the strategy totally legal you can actually set it up so whatever uh nonprofit building or affordable housing you set up you can actually set it up where it also covers your living expenses if you set it up properly legal you know, again, this isn't me setting it up. You actually have a real law firm going to set this up. I'm considering taking partners on doing something like this. If not, I'll do it myself. And this is part of my one to two year plan. Um, for those of you who've been paying attention, I said I would have three holding companies by the end of 2021. I'm already going to have two. I got my holding company. I'm not even counting my sole proprietorship. I have my holding company in, the, in Wyoming. I have the C Corp. They're going to set up for me from Zetegrity. I'm going to set up a Delaware LLC to hold my all my commercial stuff on the personal side. And then going into the following year, which would be 2022, because I know it's going to take a year, I'm going to have a nonprofit organization with or without partners. So that's my one to two year plan. You guys don't even want to see my five year plan because it's way over even my head. But this is the type of stuff we're going to be talking about. This will be going into the course. So if you don't watch this whole video on the channel. This will be definitely going into the course because a nonprofit is kind of like a holding company. It can own a church. It can own multiple LLCs that also own real estate. So in a sense, it'll be like the holding company, and then you can have LLCs under your nonprofit that hold the actual real estate. Somebody slip and fall, the LLC is actually owned by the nonprofit. This is legit, guys. I already asked the law firm, it's legit. And the law firm is gonna again, they're gonna tell you, don't rush this because it's gonna take a while. So this kind of has to be money like you would be putting into investment. You got to look at it as 10 grand going into a stock and just a year later paying off. They can, again, they can get it done in nine months, but expect this to go into at least 12 months with COVID. But if you got some other things going on like me, if I get this fully funded C Corp from Zetegrity, I will definitely be taking 10 grand, putting it aside into this and just waiting out the year, guys. I'm always planning ahead for the next opportunity. And I know if all else fails, I have that nonprofit set up and got that exemption because they backdate the exemption from the time they applied. Now you have something that can buy real estate tax free. Now don't get confused. You're not going to mix this with your commercial you're going to be doing with your Delaware Corp. This is going to be totally separate. But what you could do, your Delaware Corp can actually donate a property to your nonprofit get a tax exemption and then of course the nonprofit doesn't pay any tax but you will get a tax exemption on the company that donated the property totally legal guys just don't rush this stuff this is a great way 
to actually help your community. You may want live in one of these areas. You may live in Hartford or New Haven or Bridgeport and actually want to help your community. You can go in by buying these broken down, busted up buildings, actually getting the government to help you buy it. They will actually give you the grants, give you the, the loans. You're going to have the best rate because it's going to be under a nonprofit. They're not going off your personal credit score, guys. You got to remember, you're going to set this up properly so your nonprofit can also build corporate credit. So on top of everything else, your nonprofit can be building corporate credit. You know, it's going to be getting way discounted real estate because it's a nonprofit. It's going to get it tax exempt. You're not paying taxes on it. You can actually pay yourself. Your salary is going to be taxed, but your actual revenue you're bringing into your nonprofit won't be taxed. That's why I say keep your salary low because that's the only thing that's going to be taxed. Keep your salary low. Your nonprofit can buy your truck to work in because you got to get to work. You got to go back and forth and do what you got to do for the nonprofit. It can pay for your vehicle, phone. Could, it could probably even pay for your living expenses where you're living at. It could control that building as well. This stuff is doable, guys. And this is like a living trust in the sense that your nonprofit will live on forever. Forever. You can have a controlling member in your family, your grandkids, your great grandkids, looking at your picture in the hall of a nonprofit you built and be like, Grandpa did it. If it wasn't for Grandpa, we wouldn't even have a job. Because you can provide jobs for your family members legally. This is setting up your dynasty, guys. Now, don't get me wrong, I'm still going to have the living trust probably owning my property I do live in when I'm finally ready to get settled down and settled down. It might not be Connecticut. You know, I want a hot climate. So let's say Atlanta. I'll buy a house in Atlanta, fully paid for by then. Just throw that in the living trust. Let's let the living trust control that. I will still have the nonprofit here in Connecticut. But I'll have managing people, managing people, staff running that, sending me a salary, you know, I'm going to have my C Corp that Z Tiger setting up now as my media company, controlling all my channels. You know, my regular holding company is going to be the company I use to partner with people. So if you come in, you want to partner with me on a, a new LLC, I will use that to partner with you. But another reason why a nonprofit is good for asset protection is it can never be taken away from you legally. So say you got a controlling member, he gets in a car accident, slips and kills somebody, drives and kills somebody, whatever. They can come after a salary, but they cannot take your nonprofit away, ever. So your nonprofit can only live on forever, like a holding company. I mean, like not like a holding company, like a living trust. But it cannot be taken away. So it's got asset protection, like a holding company. Granted, people know you're a member, you're not a like a president. You control the nonprofit, but you're not an owner, so they can't take you away. You can get locked up every day, and they cannot take your funds from your nonprofit. Your nonprofit can, again, buy real estate as much as it wants, tax-free. You're going to get the best deals. You already know that because it's a nonprofit. You can take in donations. You can do a consignment shop or, you know, some other nonprofit form. I might actually go to my nonprofit and offer free financial advice in the nonprofit. So that'll be one of the nonprofit classes. You come in, take the free course, and I'll talk about my stuff. But on the back end, I can charge you a fee or something later if you get, like, say, buy my course. You know, I'll do like a free class, but if you buy my course, I made a profit on my separate company. So there's a lot of ways you can intermingle these and help each other out. and But the fact that a nonprofit could live on forever, just like a living trust, you know, you don't need the anonymity because, again, you're not an owner. Um, you guarantee your kids a job. You know, it's good, good buy you a car tax free. They could even probably buy the place you actually call your home at some point in time. 
if you structure it properly. You can even have, again, one of these lawyers be on your board to keep you in compliance for a small fee, maybe a small yearly fee or a monthly fee. You know, if you want to do one of these and you want me to bring me on as a member, you know, for a small fee or a small monthly fee, I will consider it. You know, and I'm not going to be the one to keep you in compliant, but I'll be the one to give you strategies and ideas and be like, well, you might come up with Will. We need a way to bring in more money to the nonprofit. I could be that guy. So again, one last time, nine to 10 grand. I would say you don't have more than like five people come in and to do this, you know, as partners say, um, give it up to a year, expect that this is going to be, take up to a year for them to get it set up due to COVID. Uh, before COVID, I would say possibly six to nine months, but with COVID, you're looking at a year, wait, just put, take this money, especially if you're as integrity, you're getting some of this big corporate credit through the black table, take 10 G's set aside for this at least 10 and set aside for a non-profit organization outside of doing your holding company do your holding company too but do your non-profit if i were to have to pick one i would say set aside money for your non-profit no for your holding company first because you might want to jump in on some real estate sooner than the non-profit so the nonprofit, just pay that. Consider the stock, you know, something you got to wait on, invest money in it, wait on it. But in the meantime, you have your holding company. So anything you buy with your C-Corp, the Z-Tegrity gets you. You want to be a five piece of property, you're not going to buy it under the C-Corp. You're going to put it under your, another LLC that's under your holding company. This way you get sued, they don't trace it back to you. That's what we're going to be talking about on this channel. Again, this video, if you don't watch it on the channel, this will be on the course. Welcome back to the course. If you're uh, tuning back in, I'm going to keep adding value to the holding company course. If you're seeing us on the channel, links below for the holding company course. Introductory price. The price is going to go up as we add more content to the course, and it's going to improve the value. Thank you. I'll catch you guys in the next one. Subscribe, like, and comment. I'll see you next time.